Okay, good morning. Chapter 41, Genesis. Um, we last stopped at uh, chapter 40 when uh, Joseph, Joseph uh, was forgotten by the butler. Yeah. And he was left there in the prison for another two years, which is sad. That chapter 40 is about communion with Christ. It is about remembering Christ. So let's not be like the butler who, who forget the goodness of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we remember our Lord Jesus uh, through the cup yeah, and the bread. Okay? So now, looking at chapter 41, which is about uh, this Pharaoh's dreams and the interpreter of dreams is none other than Joseph and this was God's providence for him out of this from the prison to the palace so Father God we just come to you once again thirsting and also being hungry for your word and for your truth Lord we sit before your throne of grace once again and ask that your Holy Spirit will just come and anoint our hearts and our minds receiving everything that you have for us in Jesus name Amen then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream and behold he stood by the river suddenly there came out of the river and you know which river is this river now seven cows fine looking and fat and they fed in the meadow then behold seven other cows came up after them out of the river ugly and gaunt and stood by the other cows on the bank of the river and the ugly, ugly and gone cows ate up the seven fine looking and fat cows. So Pharaoh awoke, he slept and dreamt a second time. And suddenly seven heads of grain came up on one stalk, plump and good. Then behold, seventeen heads blighted by the east wind. You know, this east wind is actually called the Sirocco. S-I-R-O-C-C-O. Okay, this east wind uh, is a very hot and dry wind from the Arabian desert just uh, additional knowledge okay. blighted by the east wind sprang up after them and the seventeen heads devoured the seven plump and full heads so Pharaoh awoke and indeed it was a dream now it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled and he sent and called for all the musicians of Egypt and all his wise men and Pharaoh told them his dreams but there was no one who could interpret them for Pharaoh and I told you during the, the last lesson in, in Egypt at that point in time there were professional dream interpreters if you have a dream you look for these people they will come and they will interpret for you but why did Pharaoh not understand the dream himself why why did he not understand the dream himself you turn to first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 I think on this month we can finish Genesis only 10 more chapters okay we do about two or three two or three should be able to finish before church camp verse 14 but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned like even right now right now if you look at the aware issue okay, to me uh, I don't support all this uh, of course we don't we know Romans chapter 1 yeah, God is against homosexuality and so on but the manner in which it was done to hijack another society I think uh, the public wouldn't accept it so easily if that is 
true, then you don't agree with the Taoists and the Buddhists and the Hindus and the Muslims. Then every society you penetrate and hijack. Do you do that? You don't want. Start your own society and, and do the thing. Yeah. Uh, if you don't like awareness, start another one. Call it beware. You know. <laughs> okay. But the natural man doesn't understand. To them, they think that hey. As long as two persons like each other, they love each other, then they can get married. But different sex don't matter. Two men can raise a child, no, no matter. Two women can raise a child, no matter. No, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. You understand? Okay? So the natural man doesn't understand. So that's why, back to Genesis uh, chapter 41, verse 8. It, the, the, the Pharaoh woke up in the morning and his spirit was troubled because he did not understand these things. Verse 9. Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember my faults this day. At least he, he, he is convicted, you know. My, my fault, my fault, I forgot. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, both me and the chief baker, we each had a dream in one night, he and I. Each of us dreamt according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now there was a young Hebrew man with us there, a servant of the captain of the guard, and we told him and he inter interpreted our dreams for us. To each man, he interpreted according to his own dream. And it came to pass, just as he interpreted for us, so it happened. He restored me to my office and he hanged him. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon and he shaved changed his clothing and came to Pharaoh. You notice, uh, you don't just come before the king in your whatever casual attire. You, you need to dress up okay, to come before the Pharaoh. Right? So it is the same. For us, we come before the king of kings, the lord of lords. Let's not be too casual about this. I, I, I mentioned once before at a leaders meeting, uh, but I don't think anything changed. Uh. It's recorded anyway. Um, many, many years ago when we were still having uh, the old building before we reconstructed the new buildings, uh, I said this is a leaders meeting. No? But I see some of y'all uh, come in slippers, in singlet, in running shorts, like you just came back from the, the, the Bedok running track or something. This is a leaders meeting. Why you're dressed like this? If people should come into the church and they say, hey, this is the Oikos leaders meeting, you all, I mean, come appropriately. Yeah? And then on Sundays, I mean, I'm not asking you to dress like the catwalk. No, 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 but put on something because you are going to meet who? The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Now, if you are in the kampong, I understand. They come in. In their simple attire, dirty toes, dirty legs, dirty clothes, and so on. You sit next to them, the aroma, and so on. And the dog is there, the cat is there. This is the kampong, but that is the best they can do. Come, God searches the heart, not the not the external. But if you are able, yeah, be a bit more appropriate. Okay, so. Here you see, if they can do it for the worldly king, why can't we do it for our heavenly king? So he shaved and changed his clothing and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream and there is no one who can interpret it. But I've heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. It is not me. You know, Joseph uh, is a beautiful picture of our Lord Jesus. He forgot the past. He wasn't bitter. He wasn't saying, Pharaoh, oh, no, no. it's about time. You know that clown, uh, I gave him the dream two years ago. Uh, he promised to remember me. Now then he remember me. And so on and so forth. He wasn't bitter about the past. He just credited all this to who? God and God and you know he said it so he said it so confidently he hasn't even heard the dream yet you know this 
but he just said God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace he knows then Pharaoh said to Joseph behold in my dream so he repeated his dream I stood on the bank of the river suddenly seven cows came out of the river fine looking and fed and they fed in the meadow then behold seven other cows came up after them poor and very ugly and gone such ugliness as I've never seen in all the land of Egypt and the gaunt and ugly cows ate up the seven the first seven the fat cows when they had eaten them up no one would have known that they had eaten them for they were just as ugly as at the beginning so I awoke as at the beginning no. so I awoke also I saw in my dream and suddenly seven heads came up on one stalk full and good then behold seven heads withered thin and blighted by the east wind sprang up after them and the thin heads devoured the seven good heads so I told this to the magicians but there was no one who could explain it to me so verse 25 the interpretation of Pharaoh's dreams then Joseph said to Pharaoh the dreams of Pharaoh are one means it is the same one message God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do the seven good cows are seven years and the seven good heads are seven years the dreams are one and the seven thin and ugly cows which came up after them are seven years and the seven empty heads blighted by the east wind are seven years of famine this is the thing which I have shown uh, spoken to Pharaoh God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do indeed seven years of great plenty will come throughout all the land of Egypt and Egypt is a picture of the world and if you go and study Revelation some of you all did uh, with me two years ago Genesis no Revelation from chapter 6 to chapter 19 that is the period of the tribulation but before the tribulation of seven years the world uh, will be having a good time people will be eating and drinking and merry making things will be good even economically and then seven years of tribulation but after them seven years of famine will arise and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt so the, the remember the number seven, seven yeah and it's repeated even in Revelation tribulation seven and the famine will come will deplete the land totally bare and you think here is hot nah? Kupang, nah? 36 37 degrees eh? even the local people want to hide under the tree eh? it's hot so the plenty you know it's Kupang Kupang is uh, Timor no? Timor that side just before East Timor is the, the furthest east if you fly one hour down it's Australia it is it's that far so you go to Bali and then go to Kupang but the joke is when I told Lim Ian and Ian told his friend Bob Tan uh, about the mission trip, all he heard was Bali, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because when we were there, I said, how, uh, okay, tell us, uh, how come both of you are here? Then they look at each other. He told me it's Bali, so I said, okay. Nah. <laughs> no, I said, Bali transit, then from Bali we go to Kupa. They said, go Bali, uh, distribute food, and then after that play golf. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, say, uh, I say I'm a terrible salesman <laughs> okay. um, so verse 31 so the plenty will not be known in the land because of the famine following for it will be very severe it will be a heavy famine now the financial crisis that we see uh, it is not the end of the world you know why because there will be something worse coming prophetically yeah now for this one week or so we see some recovery Dow Jones went up Singapore stock market went now they're talking about maybe can hit 2002 ST index and so on yeah huh? hit already wow so fast I have not been reading yeah? yesterday here yeah but this these are just 
lateral trading, some recovery, people will take profits and so on. Yeah, but be prudent, people of God, be prudent. Okay, don't think this is the best time. So you go do gearing, go borrowing, and so on. Uh, there could be things worse. Okay, he will deplete the land. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice because the thing is established by God and God will sh shortly bring it to pass. Yeah. Means God emphasized it by a second dream to confirm that it is indeed coming. Now, therefore, verse 33, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man. Now, this now you read, um, Joseph is now using the gift of wisdom. This is the gift of wisdom that God had given to him. And now he is declaring, announcing an economic program better than the Federal Reserve Board, better than all the smart people who, who they assembled in, in Washington. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land to collect one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful years. One-fifth is how many percent? Twenty percent. Okay. So it would do you good now during these years as you still have got some plenty here to save at least twenty percent of your income. Just save. At least. Okay. And let them gather all the food of all those good years that are coming and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities that the food shall be as a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt that the land may not perish during the famine. I was told, I, I don't know about this, but I was told that the Singapore government actually has got uh, a place set aside, a reserve for food for this country. So in the event of famine or external besieging us, you know, we are surrounded, we can last for a while. Dry rations are, but there is enough food and water. So here is the economic program laid out by Joseph and he told the Pharaoh a discerning and wise man and that's important you always want to choose someone who has the discerning spirit someone who is wise if you choose any of those who lack integrity and, and just because of his experience because of his connection and so on you know something he will not be discerning he will be corrupted and all the resources will be depleted you look at our neighboring countries and uh, some of those third world countries and so on uh, they are blessed with resources you understand they got oil, they got coconut, they got palm, they got this, they got rubber. But somehow, the resources have not been optimized. If they were, the country would have been far much better. But we have got nothing much. Yeah? And yet, we use our resources well. So that is a lesson to learn. Okay? Be discerning and wise. So verse 37. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. If, if I were Pharaoh, uh, I would say what? Yes, right. Because at the end of the day, you know who wins? I win one. I do nothing. I tell the whole country, uh, every produce that you have, 20% is mine, put in the city. You know? I do nothing and I get everyone to pay tax. No. Wow. What's the complaint? No, no complaint. Yeah? And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? You know, the Pharaoh recognized there is something different about Joseph. He recognized that there must be a Spirit, a Spirit of God in Joseph. 
if you look at Egypt when you go and visit, I, mean, I have not been to Egypt, but you look at all the pictures and National Geographic and so on, they believe in spirits. They are into all those kind of occultic, occultic practices. So, so they know about the supernatural. So he could have said something else, other spirits, but if you read, it is capital S or small s. So he knows this is different. You must be the the son of God. I mean, not son of God. You must be a child of God. You 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 must be someone whom God is using. So the spirit of God is in you. Okay. So for us, uh, what must we do? We must let our light shine before men, that people will see our good works and praise who our Father in heaven. So no more secret agents. Okay. Verse 39 Then Pharaoh said to Joseph Inasmuch as God has shown you all this There is no one as discerning and wise as you You shall be over my household And all my people shall be ruled according to your word Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you So in effect what is Joseph's position second in charge okay or they call him prime minister but he is the second in charge and Pharaoh said to Joseph see I have set you over all the land of Egypt so now we see promotion from prison to palace so we, we saw from pit to Potiphar From Potiphar to prison From prison to palace PPP Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand Now, uh, you know, I, I explained a, a couple of lessons back You know, the signet uh, that In that occasion, it was like a cylindrical thing And then with a, a, a chain around his neck, he hung there but in this case, the Pharaoh has the signet ring. And if you remove this, the, the, the ring, you see underneath there is his personal name, inscription. And they will use this to stamp, like you and I, we sign. Stamp. <coughs> On any document, if it is stamped, that is official. It is authorized by the king. And so for him to pass this to Joseph, hey, that is a mighty, mighty dele delegation of authority, giving giving Joseph the highest authority in the land in terms of execution of duties. Okay, and put it on Joseph's hand, and he clothed him in garments of fine linen. In garments of fine linen. If you look at the history of Egypt, you know, wow, the pharaohs and the royal palace they really dress well. But the slaves are only wear sarong only. Okay? But the rest they really dress well. Okay? I don't want to spiritualize too much about this, but you know, when you are in the kingdom of God, you and I will have that robe of righteousness, the garment, the finest garment. Okay. And put on and put a gold chain around his neck. Now, in those days, for the Pharaoh to give you a gold chain, gold chain around your neck, you must be one who has pleased him. If not, it will be chains around your hand and you go prison. And you compare how he came into Egypt. Joseph came into Egypt probably in chains because he was sold as a slave. Uh, I hope he was just tying off his hands. Uh. But if you read some of those in Isaiah and some of those uh, places, uh, in those days when they pull prisoners and capture them, you know what they do? Yeah. Uh, they hook, you know? they hook either the nose or the mouth, yeah, one to it, another, and they just pull them. Okay? So, Joseph came into Egypt in chains as a slave, but now he has the gold chain around his neck. And he had him right in the second chariot which he had of course second in charge the king's chariot and then his behind and they cried out before him bow the knee so every time joseph passed by everyone is shorter than him right all bow the knee 
so he set him over the land of Egypt so we see now our friend Joseph he got also PPP he got power he got prominence and he has prestige he got power because the ring everything is under his control and he's prominent in hey, number two you no know, everywhere he went people will bow down to him and he got prestige by virtue of his position you know our Lord Jesus the day will come when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess at the name of Jesus so this is another picture of our Lord Jesus Christ every knee will bow every tongue will confess verse 44 Pharaoh also said to Joseph I am Pharaoh and without your consent no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt without your consent no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt what did Jesus say apart from me you can do nothing apart from me you can do nothing okay this these are just parallels that I'm, I'm drawing up uh, to, to give you a, a fuller understanding of this thing that we've been studying picture of Jesus nothing appears in the story of Joseph by accident it is a parallel because in the New Testament Jesus said apart from me you can do nothing so where are we verse 45 and Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zafna Pania you know it's Zafna Pania what does your Bible say what does your Bible say do you know the meaning what revealer of secrets revealer of secrets because he is an interpreter of dreams and he gave him as a wife Asina Asina is a was a gentile okay? the daughter of Potiphera priest of On On is a city where they worship the sun god city of the sun revealer of secrets so Joseph's name is revealer of secrets because he could interpret dreams a okay, revealer of secrets and gave him as a wife Asina who is the daughter of a priest of On On is the city of the sun gave him as a wife a gentile does it mean anything to you picture of Jesus and the wife Gentile thank God for that you know what that is the picture of the church because of that you and I we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus we are safe because it is not that God sent his son only to the Jews God loved the world he gave his son for all of us so here is a picture of the church Gentile so he made provision for the Gentiles like us but I like the last part of this paragraph of this verse so Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt so Joseph did not stay in the palace and gave commands which he could why not he is the prime minister he can just stay in his palace and then give give commands okay uh, you go and uh, check uh, make sure they all deposit 20 percent uh, we want to collect the tax and then we will put them as a reserve and so he could have but he was industrious he was hard working just like our lord jesus you read the gospel uh, did he just stay in his hometown no he didn't he walked he went he went with his disciples he went to Capernaum he went to Galilee he went to Jerusalem he went everywhere he came to seek and to save the lost he could have just stood where he is and then called the people and by his reputation people will flock to him 
but our Lord Jesus went. He went to the prostitute. He went to the the, the, the tax collectors and, and so on and so forth. He went. He was industrious. Okay. So don't get don't get the wrong doctrine uh, where some some people will teach you. you know, it's all by grace. You know, all by grace. Just sit down and enjoy His grace. Don't need to do anything. You know why? Because Jesus has already done everything for you. Really, uh, then how did the 50 people in the prison in Kupang got saved? How did the people in Kupang in the football field, there's, there's some village there, the, the, the 30 odd people got saved? How did the orphanage there get, get the food and so on? Because people go. You understand? So the, the doctrine about grace is sometimes over uh, emphasized. We are saved for works. You look at Joseph, he went out over all the land of Egypt. Verse 46. Joseph was how old? 30 years old when he stood before the Pharaoh king of Egypt. He was 30 years old when he was appointed the second in command in Egypt. How old was Jesus when he started his ministry? Okay. Now you begin to see the parallel. This is a wonderful story of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. He began his ministry at 30, so did Joseph when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So, how many years was he in the pit, in the prison, and so before he was appointed? 13, because he was sold at the age of 17. Plus 13, now he is 30 years old. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh. So sometimes you're suffering uh, 13 years. Uh, it's okay. Don't worry. Okay? You suffer one year. It's complete. And went throughout all the land of Egypt. Now in the seven plentiful years, the ground brought forth abundantly. Jabiliang. Right? They say. So he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in the cities. He laid up in every city the food of the fields which surrounded them. It talks about organization. It talks about being able to administrate, to put things together. And he couldn't have done it alone because you read earlier, he appointed others to help him. Okay? Joseph gathered very much grain as the sand of the sea until he stopped counting for it was immeasurable. Cannot count. You know what? God will open up the windows of heaven and pour forth into your barns uh, that your barns cannot contain. Where is this? Where is this verse? Last book of the Bible. Malachi. Okay. But it's okay. Homework. You can read. Malachi chapter 3 And to Joseph were born two sons Before the years of famine came Whom Asina, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On Some commentator, Bible scholars say This Potipharah is related to the Potiphar okay? But doesn't matter Born to him Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. If you have been reading the Bible and so on, you know there is, you know, Manasseh and so on. Okay? Manasseh. What does Manasseh mean? What does Manasseh mean? Forgetting the past. Forgetting the past. Some people, when you do counseling with them and so on, you know what is the most difficult task? Getting them to forget the past. They cannot. They still remember the day they were hurt, the day they were scolded, the day they were uh, uh, unfairly treated, and, and, and so unforgiveness, they cannot release. And because of that, they, they always have the problem, they always struggle with this. Learn to release. Not easy, but learn to release. If you were Joseph, would it be easy? 17 year old, no? How old are you? Five more years, I'll sell you, you know? <laughs> You feel a 70 year old and, and you, you are you're separated from your, your, your parents, from your siblings, you're thrown into a, a place where you are a slave, and then you, you, you got wrongly accused, you were thrown into prison, 
and, and I'm sure you know your life is isn't that great. But but he forgot the past. Yeah, forgetting the past, pressing forward, looking unto the, the the future. That is Joseph. So he named his son Manasseh, forgetting the past. For God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second he called Ephraim. Ephraim. What is the meaning of Ephraim? Fruitful. So, if you want to be fruitful, you must forget the past. If you keep hanging on to the past, you will never achieve much in the future. Because God will do a new thing in you. You must allow Him to do a new thing in you. Forget the past. I tell people, you cannot keep driving and looking in the rearview mirror. No? Cannot. You will wrap yourself around a tree. You know? right? You keep driving and you keep looking in the rearview mirror. Look forward. Forgetting the past. And so, these are the two names that he had given to his children. Philippians 3.13 Philippians 3.13, you all should know this. Huh? Yeah? But it is important because some people cannot. Philippians 3.13 3, 13, 3, 1, 3. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching <coughs> forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Forgetting the past, I press forward. You know what? God has got something better for me. Okay? So, back to Genesis. For God has called, caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. You will never imagine if you were in the pit and then subsequently in the prison and that you know, one day I shall be the second in charge of Egypt. It is beyond your mind, you understand? Yeah, like I hope one day I shall be Prime Minister of Singapore. It will never happen. Yeah? But by divine arrangement, Joseph was the Prime Minister or second in charge. So he said, Lord, I thank you, you know, for the fruitfulness in the land of my affliction. Then the seven years of plenty, which were in the land of Egypt, ended. So how old is uh, Joseph by now? 37. 30 plus 7 years of plenty, 37. And the 7 years of famine began to come. As Joseph had said, the famine, which is a picture of tribulation, was in all lands. A picture of the world. The picture of the whole world. All lands. But in all the land of Egypt, there was bread. So when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Then Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph. Whatever he says to you, do. Go to Joseph. Whatever he says to you, do. Do you remember there's a parallel to this? Where is this? The first miracle. Okay, John chapter 2. John chapter 2. The first miracle of our Lord Jesus. They ran out of wine, verse 3. The mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not come. But the mother, a bit deathly, she didn't hear. The mother just turned to the servant, didn't even answer Jesus. She said, whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever he says to you, do it. I preached this, I think, many, many uh, watch night services ago. Okay? 
whatever he tells you whatever problem you have go to him whatever he tells you do it okay so it is the same a picture of Jesus go to Joseph whatever he says to you do verse 56 the famine was over all the face of the earth and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians underline the word sold he sold to the Egyptians the Egyptians uh, they gave 20% right now when it is famine uh, they sold I mean Joseph sold to the Egyptians but later on when the brothers came Joseph's brothers came did he sell to them he gave to them yeah plus some more money some more okay we will, we will read that later so God, God favors his own people he bless you okay and the famine became severe in the land of Egypt so all countries came to Joseph all countries came to Joseph you know what this this is a picture of the Savior this is the picture of the because if they stay where they are they will run out of grain they run out of bread how would they live so the only place that has got food is Egypt and the only person who can say yes or no as the Pharaoh had given him the authority is Joseph so only him only he can save us so we go and see him and so he is a picture of the Savior in Egypt to buy grain because the famine was severe in all the lands so this is a picture of tribulation the time of tribulation is to bring the people of the world to who to Christ this is their last chance this is their last chance because if they had taken the first flight they would have been raptured but these are the people who did not believe who did not repent at eighties and whatever so during the tribulation it is to bring these people to Christ not the Antichrist but of course during the tribulation in the midst of the tribulation the Antichrist will arise and he will take his place in the world and he will be con controlling the, the, the world economically financially politically and everything he's a one world leader right but the tribulation is not to draw people to the Antichrist but it's to draw people to Christ and as we study later further as when the brothers come into the picture it is also to, to, to drive the Jews to the Messiah because until then they will not believe that Jesus is the Messiah but during the tribulation they will be driven to Christ okay so tribulation serve its purpose okay but for us for us we look not unto Jesus no we look not unto Joseph because there is a greater Joseph we look not unto Joseph but we look unto the greater Joseph who is he Jesus okay you turn to Hebrews 12 verse 2 12 verse 2 so even in, if in this economic crisis and so on you have some of the best politicians who, who will give you great ideas and so on huh? yeah so if you if you, you you read in the papers and some of those great e economic professor you know uh, what Nobel Peace Prize and all these people no there is one greater the greatest in fact Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith so he started it he will finish it who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God so we fix our eyes on Jesus set your mind on things above and not things of the world okay amen that's chapter 41